acids and bases represent two major types of compounds that we can apply equilibrium concepts to. In this PowerPoint, we'll review what it means for a substance to be an acid and a base, and discuss how the Bronsted-Lowry definition allows us to view these substances in the light of equilibrium. Acids were first recognized as a class of substances that taste sour. Citric acid, for example, is what makes lemons taste sour. Acids also react in very characteristic manners. They react with metals like magnesium, zinc, and aluminum to release hydrogen gas. They release carbon dioxide gas from carbonate-containing substances like baking soda and marble. And they change the color of certain dyes. For example, acid will turn certain blue dyes red. Bases, on the other hand, tend to taste bitter, like caffeine, and feel slippery. They're also caustic, which means that they react with organic matter, like Drano does when you use it to clear clogs in your sink. Bases also change the color of certain dyes. They tend to turn red dyes blue. So the first person to recognize the essential nature of acids and bases was Svante Arrhenius. His definitions are based on his studies of electrolytes in solution. And he found that acids increase the concentration of hydrogen ions when dissolved in solution, while bases increase the concentration of hydroxide ions. So the Arrhenius definitions are good ones. They let us recognize a wide variety of substances as acids because they have hydrogens in their structures that can easily ionize. Now, these structures include several different types. One major type is the binary acid. So these include things like hydrochloric acid or hydrofluoric, hydroiodic, or hydrobromic acid. They consist of a hydrogen that's directly bound to a non-metal atom. You can also have oxy acids like sulfuric acid or nitric acid. So these acids have the hydrogen bound to an oxygen contained in a polyatomic anion, like the sulfate anion or the nitrate anion. Finally, you can also have carboxylic or organic acids. So these are organic compounds that have a carboxylic acid group as part of the carbon hydrogen chain. So the carboxylic acid group is a carbon double bound to an oxygen and then attached to another hydroxyl group, an OH group. The R here represents the carbon hydrogen chain that's the rest of the molecule. So the hydrogen that ionizes to make it an acid is the part of the hydroxyl group. The group is often written as COOH, so you can recognize it sometimes in a formula when it's written this way. It's also often written in a traditional format with the hydrogen that ionizes as the first one in the formula. So two great examples are acetic acid and citric acid. Acetic acid is the active ingredient in vinegar, and you can see the carboxylic acid group right here. Citric acid, as we've already mentioned, is what makes lemons sour. And it actually contains three different carboxylic acid groups. It's important to remember that there are going to be other hydrogens in these formulas, but it's only the hydrogen that's on that COOH that ionizes and that makes it an acid. So the Arrhenius definition of a base, again, is that it's a substance that increases the concentration of hydroxide, OH, ions when dissolved in water. And this 
fits very well most ionic bases. These are ionic compounds that contain a hydroxide polyatomic as part of the structure. For example, sodium hydroxide, NaOH. This is a soluble ionic compound. When it dissolves in water, it produces dissociated hydroxide ions. Arrhenius's definition, however, doesn't adequately explain a variety of other bases. For example, it turns out that substances that contain carbonate ions actually are basic. So things like calcium carbonate, CaCO3, and sodium bicarbonate. There are also molecular compounds, organic compounds, that contain amine or NH groups that are also basic. So these substances don't have a hydroxide group as part of their structure. So how can they produce hydroxide ions in solution? There is a more general definition of acids and bases that can help explain this. It was proposed by the Danish chemist Johannes Bronsted and the English chemist Thomas Lowry. And according to their definition, acids and bases are defined by how they react. In particular, acids donate a proton or a hydrogen ion during a reaction, while bases accept a proton. In the Bronsted-Lowry definition, acids and bases are defined relative to each other. For example, HCl is an acid because it donates a proton, a hydrogen, to water when it dissolves. And it forms the chloride anion and the H3O plus cation. Water, because it accepted that hydrogen, is considered a base. In the same way, ammonia, NH3, acts as a base when it dissolves in water because it accepts a proton, a hydrogen ion, from water. It becomes the ammonium cation, NH4+, and the water becomes hydroxide, OH-. And water, because it donated a proton, is considered the acid when it reacts with the base, NH3. The Bronsted-Lowry definition also allows for substances that can act as both an acid or a base. So these are known as amphoteric substances, and water is a classic example of one. In the two reactions we just looked at, water acted as a base for hydrochloric acid by accepting a proton. It also acted as an acid for ammonia, NH3, by donating a proton. The way that it reacts, whether it donates or accepts a proton, depends upon what is dissolved in solution with it. One of the advantages of the Bronsted-Lowry definitions is that they allow reactions to be reversible. So for example, when an acid donates a proton to a base, the base then ends up becoming or gaining that proton, it has an extra hydrogen on the product side. And that extra hydrogen can actually be donated in the reverse direction. So what the base becomes on the product side can actually be an acid in the reverse reaction. We call this a conjugate acid. In the same way, after the acid has donated its proton, It now has a negative charge, it's an anion, and it can accept the hydrogen back from the conjugate acid in the reverse reaction. As a result, the, ba or excuse me, the acid has become a conjugate base on the product side. So this was a general reaction, but let's look at some specific examples using real acids and bases. 
HCHO2 is the formula for formic acid. And when it dissolves in water, it donates that first hydrogen, which is part of a carboxylic acid, by the way, to the water. So the water acts as a base by accepting it. On the product side, then that water has an extra hydrogen. It's H3O plus because it accepted that hydrogen from the formic acid. That is the conjugate acid form of water. What the uh, formic acid becomes is the formate anion with a negative charge. And it can now, in the reverse process, accept that extra hydrogen back from the water. And so it becomes a conjugate base. We see this also in base reactions with water. So this time, water acts as the acid and donates one of its hydrogen to our base, ammonia, NH3. It becomes, on the product side, with one less hydrogen, the hydroxide anion, OH. And that's the conjugate base form of water. NH3, which has accepted that extra hydrogen, is now NH4 plus, a cation, which is the conjugate acid form of ammonia. So in a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction, the original base becomes an acid in the reverse reaction, and the original acid becomes a base in the reverse process. We call each reactant and the product that it becomes a conjugate pair. For example, in the reaction between ammonia and water, the water acted as an acid in the forward process, and it became hydroxide ion, OH minus, on the product side. So water and hydroxide constitute an acid conjugate base pair. Ammonia, on the other hand, accepted the proton, so it started as a base, and it became NH4 on the product side it constitutes a base conjugate acid pair. So in summary, the Arrhenius definitions define acids as substances that ionize to produce hydrogen ions in water. Bases dissociate to produce hydroxide ions. These are good definitions, but it doesn't explain the basic nature of carbonates and molecular bases. The Bronsted-Lowry definitions define acids as substances that donate protons in reaction. Bases accept protons in reaction. These definitions explain the basic nature of a wider variety of substances. They allow for amphoteric substances. They also allow for reversible processes with conjugate acid and base pairings.